Why, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am your host, Random Randy, and uh, today we're going to start off. I uh, did a live the other day, and uh, I didn't manage to get the screen to share. So I um, wanted to go ahead and, and dig into some of that stuff, show you guys what it was that I was looking at. Um, I think it's a really cool concept, and... You know, just like everything else out there, it's it's a possibility, right? I'm real big on possibilities. And uh, hopefully that wasn't muted the entire time there. But I, I love possibilities. I, I think that it's, you know, it's important for us to to reflect on what is possible and not just, you know, kind of be convinced that everything that we're told is is 100%, you know, up to snuff. So, um Looking into cathedrals, things like this, it's interesting. It screams technology. And uh, and I think almost anybody can agree that that's the case, right? So there's a video game. It's called Mass Effect. And, uh, you know, again, I'm going through stolen history, looking at these links, bringing them all to your guys' attention, and and really just kind of mulling it around as I go over it. Um, now, this one I've mulled over a bit. And, um, you know, when we have concepts like these, it really makes me feel like uh, if we're to look at time in a linear fashion, like we're way at the end of the timeline, like tons and tons of stuff, different versions of reality ha have all happened in what we would call the past. And uh, so my opinion is kind of that the inspiration that folks find pulling from these these akashic records and these you know subliminal spaces um would have in some sense had to have transpired in a certain way uh, in order for that information to be available for download or or for inspirational purposes right so, so that's the thought, but let's take a look. We're going to jump over here into, into Mass Effect and Cathedrals, right? And uh, I, again, I did a live video on this, but I, I want to touch back over it. And and even if it's not exactly, right, what's going on in this video game, uh, this video game being Mass Effect, hugely popular sci-fi video game uh, where every advanced species in the galaxy harvests zero-point energy, all right, altering the mass of the object in that field. Hence the name Mass Effect. Um, I think that this mass altering scenario could be what was used with the pyramids, right? And um, now it, it's it's kind of like one or the other for me with the pyramids. Either these things were poured and, and you know compiled in place, which a lot of people disagree with, um, or these things were levitated or, or helped along in some way. So, so those are the couple of, of thoughts. I, I personally think it's a combination of both. I think that in the 18, 17 and 1800s, whenever, when they were digging all this stuff out, you know, I really think that they tuned up a lot of these things uh, and, and tuning up, meaning removed whatever technology was embedded in them and then put facades on everything. Um, and that's across the board and that's everything. So you know, that's the thought on the pyramids. I know that's pretty random, but I am a random character. So that should be just fine. As you can see here, boop, boop. So I don't know if it pulled up my little random logo there, but there you have it. Anyway, so sci-fi, science fiction. What do we know about science fiction? Well, we know that it readily becomes science fact. Right. Once the inspiration's there, we, we seem to find a way to make these things happen. And um, now, could that possibly mean that we're we had already found a way to make these things happen and therefore it gets relegated to the memories of uh, of the world or of the collective? Right. Where we can later pull inspiration from. So so that's the thought. Anyway, 
Anyway, all over the galaxy in this video game, there are massive mass relays, uh, bi-directional portals for spaceships to travel faster than light, right? So here's a here's an example of what the Citadel is and what the Reaper is. Now, these Reapers looking strangely similar to the like squid things in the Matrix, right? So, so basically, the network of faster than light travel and the Citadel, right? Which, hey, you know, you can look at this like it's like it's the Ark, right? Like if you know you're going to have ca uh, ca catastrophes happening, you know, down on Earth, wouldn't you have something up there, uh, out there, maybe even underground in there or underwater down there, right? Maybe something uh, to facilitate this madness, whatever this thing is that we're a part of, uh, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's kind of, uh, in, in my mind, it's got to be a mixture of all of the things, all of the ideas that people have about what this place is. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet, guys, that it's in some way, shape, or form, all of the above. Seems like when you're taking a test when you're younger and all of the above shows up 90% of the time, that's the right answer. And I think that this is no different in this case. So anyway, um, so the thought is when we're talking into old world and cathedrals, right? The thought is, is that these old buildings were built by someone else for, for a, a purpose similar to this, a harvesting um, or a gathering of energy, right? Um, and, and, you know, I, I think that they could be onto something here. And, you know, uh, Matt and, and Matthew got together uh Matt at, at the Great Deception and, and Matthew Smith of DreamDesignBuild.org, they got together and we're going over some of the aspects of these cathedrals, one of which being the way that the cathedral is laid out like a blueprint for the the person. It's laid out like a blueprint for a man or a woman, however, um, being that where the congregation would sit is right about where the heart is or the heart chakra and being where the preacher might sit or stand is is up in in the crown area or you know maybe not the crown that might be the behind the uh behind the podium area that's like sacred right so that's the crown uh, and then you have you know where the preacher's sitting uh or or possibly the preacher's sitting in the throat speaking down to the congregation but but anyway it, it really ties into like as within so without um as above so below like this direct reflection that that every aspect of our reality has inside and outside of us um and, and you know the more i look into into history and and different stories and and all of this just amazing detail that that exists in this world um there's always this underlying kind of pattern and that as above so below is is a good way to encapsulate what that pattern is and looks like now the old buildings, is, and these are opinions, right? These are some of the opinions going around out there. And I think some of these opinions are important to ignore, um, like them being too perfect to be made by our generation. Now, one thing I'll point out about our generation, guys, is our generation consists of these robber barons. Our generation consists of these entrepreneurs, many of them out there in the world, legitimate go-getters, right? So don't, don't discount that. There's a portion of society that is very active, very disciplined, and, and is handling their business and is doing a beautiful job at it, right? Architects, et cetera. Of course, we have some issues with architects when we look back, right? When we look back, we're like, how did this one guy do all this? If this one guy is part of a big group that is essentially tasked with building this surroundings, this environs, environs for us to have all of our experiences, then they would have the skills. They would have the technology. They wouldn't necessarily let us know about it, right? Now, when I first started looking into old world Antarctica, it was kind of scary, right? I'm like, hey, why is why is it not frightening to people that an entire civilization may have possibly been just reset, wiped off? And and, and the thought was, well, this cabal did this, didn't they? Right? A lot of information has come to light since uh, that says maybe it's not the cabal that is doing these resets maybe it's a cyclical thing that they just happen to know about it and and therefore they're able to make it appear as though they're the ones pulling the strings that could be the case right 
could all just be by design. We could just have diff different version 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 being booted up in the background. And when we get to a certain point, that new thing's rolled out. I think we're seeing that new rollout happen right now. That's what the metaverse is. That's what 2D, you know, the further dimension inward. Uh, but it's it's weird. It's it's a bastardization of one dimension inward. It's 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 a two-dimensional outward dimension. So it's strange. But either way, and I've talked about this in some videos before, it seems like a purpose of the society that we're in is predominantly to create this 2D world. Now, in order to have a reason to want to create it, it seems to me that these powers that be put us in a situation to not really admire, care for, um, or, or enjoy the world that we live in. So they put all this negativity out, blanketing us with downers on a daily, right? Driving people to believe that their only escape, right? Because listen, they've cut off religion, uh, or I mean, they've cut off spirituality in the sense that it's either woo-woo or it's religious, right? So it, it gives people a reason to stay away from that looking within, right? And, and I think that this is by design. I think this design is so that we start to engage in this 2D, we'll call it 2D world, this this metaverse, right? This sub world that we are creating right and and it's also a god complex on on humanity's part like we want to create something where we can be the dictator right where us as a random random randy can just pop in here with a few few pages of code and dominate right and why do we want that we want that because it's been kept from us on our daily lives right and I think this is all by design, guys. But anyway, so I think that's the purpose of this one. Now, was there a purpose with some of these buildings in the past to um, either cultivate or harvest energies, subtle energies? And I think the answer is yes. Now, I think that's just one of the answers. I think a, a secondary answer is that what we're looking at in these bigger structures from citadels to towns to cities uh, and, you know, complete with underground plumbing and mail systems and things like this. And what we're seeing is the analog version of everything we have in the palm of our hands today. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to say this over and over again. Hopefully people start to catch on. But when you start to look at 50 years ago, and maybe not 50, maybe 100, right? Because we're, we're getting up there. Um, a computer would take an entire hall, an entire room, an entire building, right? So if you go back even further, is it is it ridiculous to believe that a, a computer may have been an entire town or an entire city's worth of structures with these components built into them? The cathedrals, the bells creating the standing wave vibration that would actually power the thing. Um, and that's an interesting thing. You start looking into sound, right? You start looking into sound and you start to see that harmonics is, is the biggest key to everything absolutely everything harmonics would even be the way that these reapers or these you know these mass effect situations would happen it would have to create a harmonic thereby like allowing you to see the harmonic of the other exit right so you would you would go and you would stand somewhere maybe and it might be something like star trek where you're like beam me up and then this thing harmonically uh, happens and it vibrates your body in that same specific octave and key. And then it creates that vibration elsewhere. And there you are, right? It may not even have anything to do with like dematerializing or anything. It might just be boom, you're harmonically instantly, you know, attracted to that other harmonic. And um, so it's interesting. Start looking at sound and all this stuff. It, it's mind blowing guys. But anyway, um, what if these old buildings had a purpose like that to harvest energy at a minimum? Maybe not so much to harvest a civilization. I know we think of like uh, the the rapture, like people just floating off, right? Um, but what if it was different than that? What if it was like an ongoing thing? You know, uh, I I'm I beg to differ about the too perfect to be made by our generation. We do seem weak, dumb, and short lifespan. Um, 
But I, you know, I think that's by design. I, I think that we're being led to believe all of these things, everybody. But anyway, so ad orientum, cathedrals and churches facing east. And this is some of the important stuff I wanted to show and demonstrate for some of these uh, images, right? That, that we have here. Uh, some of which being, all right. So when I was talking about the cathedral, we have the crown looking very much like a crown up top, right? The heart would be in the center. We'd have like the throat right here where the uh, guy stands and, you know, and then back here is, uh, you know, so anyway, um, this is Chartres Cathedral. Look at how mechanical this thing looks. And, uh, you know, after looking into some shape power, I, I recommend going and looking at that book anyway, guys. Um, shape Power by Danny Davidson. It's um, it's interesting what the power of shapes actually can do. And you start seeing that, like, you can conduct voltage with, like, chopsticks and a foam ball. Very interesting stuff. Okay. Go look into that. It, it really frames a lot of this these questions in a new light. Some people might say, well, that shape power stuff is woo-woo and metaphysical. Sure it is. But it seems to me that in the past, there was a, a very common understanding of the metaphysical and the physical. And what we're doing now is we're making a bastardization of the metaphysical in this meta world so, so that it's something that we can control. Um, now, does that mean man never controlled the metaphysical? No, I, I think that it was done away with on purpose. I think that, you know, magic as we understand it in fantasy was removed. Okay. I think some of these structures may have had a capacity to help anchor that magic in this world. And that's why so many of them were destroyed. Um, and that's why the shape power has been done away with because it empowers people. Okay. It empowers people. But anyway, so we see this facing East here now, and you can imagine based on this, uh, diagram here a vast majority of cathedrals are facing mm, roughly east okay at least within the 90 degrees of of facing east why is that important well in a cyclotron this is an example of the flat earth map right trigger trigger for everybody trigger so as you see it's circular what else is circular cern right in switzerland circular what else is circular the jet stream roughly circular, right? Of course, there are antennas on all continents pointing these winds around and so on and so forth. So circular, that's the, the common thing, circular. Now, is there a reason why the North might be frozen? Is there a reason why the South might be frozen? Is there a reason why these areas that are circular that may very well hold ancient technology Things like CERN, but on a much more massive scale, anchoring our reality. Dun, dun, dun. I know it gets it gets weird, right? And you get over here with me on, on uh, random fracks, it gets wild. So it's possible that there is a collider or some form of a machine in the north and also some form of a machine in the south. And these are, you know, the mechanisms that maintain the vibration of this place, uh, right? How would that work on, on any other models? I don't know, guys. It's just a guess. You know what I mean? It's a possibility. Now, we've all been taught that like the Earth is supposedly looking like this, like a bar magnet, right? But if you look at it like this, a monopole point of view, we have this beautiful circular shape, right? Beautiful circular shape right here. So... And we do know, we do know this much, that all of the compasses point to the center based on this map. So that's what I wanted to, to kind of show everybody is it's possible that these machines, much like you see these uh, molecules without a magnetic field, but when you interject it into one, they all line up, right? I'm not saying these cathedrals magically align themselves. I'm saying that they were put there in order to line up with this field or or even to help create it. So is it possible that beneath our feet, these structures still exist and are creating this constant magnetic field that does not fluctuate very much? And if it was a liquid core spinning around all violently and weird, don't you think that it would be, you know, less evenly distributed 
all the time? You know, who knows, right? But anyway, so if we're looking at it like a monopole, right? Flat Earth circular grid, okay? Does that mean that possibly if these cathedrals are facing each other in a circular grid, the speculation is that there's an engineering and technical reason for it. I'm with that thought. Now, it gets a little wild and out there. The rose windows would be directing this energy towards another cathedral or church, right? Could rose windows facing west, the entrance is facing east, it comes on through, gets magnified by the congregation and the structure and gets put back through, right? Is this part of what powers this place? Um, it definitely seems to me that our intentions have incredible effects on, on our world, on us. Uh, it, it's crazy, crazy, right? What, what the power of intention and will actually does. So imagine if you've corralled everybody's intention and all of these people are, are inside of these structures twice a week, maybe more right? Pouring their hearts out to this crown. Their energy is resonating and then flowing back through out the West to the next cathedral. And what do we know about, about energy resonators, this sort of thing? We can adjust the wavelength, the polarity, and we can adjust everything about energy. Um, we are shown not so much about the subtle energy part of being able to magnify things, but it, it's a very real thing. Um, of course, a lot of the subtle energy stuff, you have to go based on your own personal feeling and intuition, which is very, very difficult to relate to people. So anyway, moving on. When we're looking at this monopole earth, is it possible that this realm that we live on is a giant machine itself this is this is the thought that that you know is interesting to me is that we're part of a closed system or what we're told is a closed system but it's a machine and it serves a purpose part of that purpose may be the harvesting of energy from us due to our intention now is does that mean that um we're being misled to focus our intention in the wrong areas, um, thereby creating like a siphoning off point for some other entity or structure or power, possibly. Okay. So, but the thought here that this, this person has is that if they're facing each other, maybe uh, there it's a point to point connection. And I talked with Ari Asselin about this. Um, the, the video is up on the YouTube guys, go check it out. It's, it's amazing. Um, but what he's talking about, he, he's real heavily invested in the deep state side of it. And um, I'm with him on so many of the different items that he talks about, like the maritime law, deep state Martians in, in the direct sense of the term. Yes, absolutely. Does that mean that I believe that, you know, Mars is a ball out there, like millions of miles away? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Right. I know it appears to be what we're told. Right. Um, it appears to do the things that it's supposed to do when people look at it through a telescope and all of that. So, hey, man, who knows? I can't get up there, you know, and I don't prefer the my emotions be toyed with by this whole shape argument. Um, because I do know this when I'm asleep at night and I'm in my dream. Holy cow, my dream is real to me. And when I'm awake and I'm here in this world, it's real to me. Right. But um, anybody outside of my experience has no direct correlation to what is going on in here, right? So anyway, enough about that. Now, teleportation hubs, maybe, right? I'm, I'm more, more apt to think that we had like a pneumatic system, like a magnetic pneumatic system that was able to at least transport goods like all around. And man, I'll, I'll have to like sum up my entire theory on what the little ice age was and what was really going on, you know, in the last 10,000 years that we're not being told about seems to me that let's say there was this little ice. Age. Let's say it lasted all the way up until like the 1800s and everything we're told about the 1700s is just garbage because everything was just covered in ice, right? Everything's just frozen solid up until like 1816. And so what do they do? They earmark it year without a summer, right? What if it was years without summer? What if the reason for these crystal palaces is they needed an enclosure to grow crops and things to stay alive, right? And then when the world thawed out, they don't need them anymore. They don't need 
everything to be running off of natural gas anymore, right? They don't need the steampunk tech that's been keeping them warm and driving their industry. They don't need it anymore because somehow, was it fall of a vapor cannon? Who knows what the situation was that changed things, but we can definitely see that in the last, call it 12, 15,000 years, if you want, who knows how long it's actually been, but we see that there's been a difference, right? From freezing, frigid, freezing cold with megafauna to warm and lacking oxygen with micro, what we have now, the regular fauna, right? So there's something that happened there. I don't know that we're ever going to get the whole story and low down, um, but I do think these cathedrals were a part of this system excuse me, <laughs> system of this system, right? And it would make sense that you would line up your technology within the flow of this magnetic field, right? And what do we know? We have cathedrals on every continent that we know. So they're everywhere. And they do seem to run across what is known as ley lines. Okay. So teleport teleportation hubs, I don't know, right? But the idea is, is the reason that... Uh, uh, or at a minimum, they can communicate through them. I think the communication thing is is a bigger key than the transportation side of it. Um, and is it possible that the reason they were obsessed with predicting solar and lunar eclipses because the whole grid goes offline during these electromagnetic events and then just like drops people in the middle of the ocean or something? Who knows, right? So so that's the interesting interesting thought, okay? Um, and it goes on. And here's what I love about these forums, guys. They go on. And we, we have another completely random thought here. I read the other day that Russia, the U.S., and others signed a treaty in 1972 prohibiting the use of earthquake and weather control weapons, which means they have those things. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm keen to agree with that. Uh, my opinion is they use those hidden technologies to destroy all American cities and the great fires. Some people say that these were kind of reverse terraforming technologies during the war of the 1800s. And, you know, I'm with this. There was something going on, guys, and something drastic, complete upending of the world that was. And then we have the modern world of today, right? I mean, even we as humanity have a stamp on us saying that our creator made us. And does that mean that the, you know, Yahweh is, is the demiurge. I mean, who knows, right? I, I don't want to have those arguments with people. Um, I think that ultimately I'm glad to exist and to be able to explore this madness, even if it is madness, I'm kind of glad to be able to explore it and, you know, bring my thoughts to others and bring their thoughts within and change this perspective on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. It's incredible. It's interesting, you know, and it could very well be Stockholm Syndrome, right? Who knows? So <clears throat> 1972, I'm going to have to look into this treaty. But um, what do we know about earthquakes? Energetic phenomena, right? What about weather? Energetic phenomena, right? Um, what starts a fire? A spark, right? What is a spark? Energetic phenomena. <laughs> okay, so it's possible, right? And it is, of course, difficult to imagine how cannonballs could have wrought all of the destruction, you know. Um, so, and, and again, these thoughts are just incredible that come on here. Um, and and here, here's an interesting one. See, people bring up some interesting thoughts. The uh, imagining matter as an energy binary code with the cathedrals as an energy access point and the rose windows, the decoder of sorts. So again, like I'm saying about our current technology in the palm of our hands, scale this up, scale it up guys. And that's what we have. Um, it seems like it's so simple. Why would nobody be able to agree with this? Um, because that's the secret guys. We talk of this about ancient aliens dropping stuff from the sky for us to figure out. No, I, I think it's the opposite. We are having to dig for it, right? We grow up hearing about buried treasure and everything. And, and then like suddenly it just like disappears or whatever. That concept becomes weird and taboo. So anyway, um, it gets wild. Okay, so and then, you know, looking into things like Stargate, Event Horizon, Mass Effect, they'll have this similar thing with this you know, 
harmonic resonance machinery, right? And this one in Stargate, it's, it's a key. So it takes all of these frequencies to line up in order to make it to work. And these frequencies are outlined by by imagery, like shapes, you know, within there. So contact. <laughs> so you just imagine, all right. And, and then like, what if, you know, <laughs> what if this was here sitting here when this reset happened? And this is what, you know, the, the privileged have been able to engage in pop into this thing and drops through. Nobody notices that you go anywhere, but you have a profound experience falling through this thing, much like an MRI machine or like a CT scan, right? I've known people that have gone and had these scans and these imaging done and had out of body experiences going through this machine as this magnetic vortex spins around them. And have had profound experiences. So it makes me really think that there's also another side to this. Not only can they use these, these machines to image, to see what's inside of us. But they could also be used to resonate harmonically with maybe somewhere else. Right? And, you know, what's interesting is when you start looking at like the inside of this place looks very similar to a lot of old world structures with the roses, the squares, the harmonic. And, and, you know, you can imagine, right? Imagine this, guys. Imagine this. We're in a concave spherical earth. And right get this and all the obelisks around the world function similarly to this. Right. And within we have the black sun that's then reflecting out on the regular sun. So who knows, right? I think it's probably some of all of the above. And the interesting thing about Ezekiel's wheel is all of the eyes, right? Similar to how when you, you see angels represented, they're almost all eyes, eyes and wings, right? So they are uh, consciousness aware, right? And, and unhampered by directionality. They can be anywhere. Right. So crazy stuff, guys, crazy stuff. And, you know, when it comes to the optics of the sky above us, it's interesting stuff. Right. I suppose that it could all be designed to look the way that we see it. Right. So here's the question. Did dome cathedrals and churches feature the same wheeled machines inside of them? It's an interesting thought and an interesting concept. And, you know, I don't know that maybe it would have been all of them. I think that maybe these these devices would have been kind of in the center of of the of the citadel of the city, right? In in the middle there. Um what was it generating? Now the less common kind of view on this is it was generating the ethereal power that we needed to actually have what's been come to know as fantastic or fantasy magic right where we could call on forces using only the power of our voice and our intention because the atmosphere around was so charged right this would explain why we have not and will probably not ever have unlimited free energy flowing through the earth and through the sky okay instead we've 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 put a stranglehold on it right and, and it's kept within certain boundaries, the boundaries of, of a wire, for example, right? The boundaries of the electrically charged atmosphere that's full of aluminum, for example, okay? So, so what we're looking at is we're looking at, at the serpent contained, right, in our world today. Now... Some of these other technologies that may have been present in the old world may have been, which is maybe why the church was like, oh, that's evil, um, may have been keeping the serpent free. The serpent being etheric and electromagnetic energy, right? So, interesting, interesting stuff. Now, um, what I also think is we could be living inside of a giant machine that is like this, like inside of it, you know, and, and that's what keeps us on a linear time plane 
because time doesn't exist. So we have to have a mechanical device to create the consistency that we know of as day-to-day -day life. Just a thought. And, and, you know, my thoughts on this stuff, guys, change constantly because I'll read a fiction, I'll read a factual book, I'll, I'll read a history, I'll read a, a their story, I'll read a, any story. And it changes the way that I look at it because it, it opens possibilities. And I think it's very important uh, when we start looking at some of this stuff that we don't knock these possibilities. Um, in some circles, films that Hollywood puts out are known as reveals, right? So is it possible that they're revealing something to us through all of this? I think so. I really think so. And then you have, you know, looking into ancient Rome, you have Janus, the god of doorways and keys, right? So what happens when people stop worshiping the God of doorways and the God of keys? They, they don't have access to the doors or the doorways anymore, right? So maybe that's what happened. So it's incredible, incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. So apparently, oh, wow, this is an interesting one, guys. This is a teleportation physics study. And, and so if you're doubting that any of this stuff is like legitimate or real, like I'll have to try to remember to put this link in there for you, but listen, we we've got organizations out there conducting the experiments. <laughs> Warp drive metrics here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So you want to know what's freaking showing up in the skies above Nevada when they're messing with warp drives underground? Come on, guys. <laughs> so Air Force Research Lab. Edwards Air Force Base, and it goes on and on. I'll leave a link to this in the description for those of you that have trucked along with me and made it this far into the video. A little gem for you. So I'll just scroll through here. The abstract purpose of collecting information, describing the teleportation of material objects. Wow. Providing a description of teleportation as it occurs in physics. It's theoretical and experimental status and a projection of potential applications. So not only is this potential, but this is as it occurs also. Okay. So they're looking at possibilities, but they're also looking at what is. The study consisted of a search for teleportation phenomena occurring naturally or under laboratory conditions that can be assembled into a model describing conditions required to accomplish the transfer of objects. This included a review and documentation of quantum teleportation, its theoretical basis, the technological development, and its potential applications. The characteristics of teleportation were divined, and physical theories were evaluated in terms of their ability to completely describe the phenomena. Contemporary physics, as well as theories that presently challenge the current physics paradigm, were investigated. Okay? That's important. They were investigated. Okay? The author identified the purpose and proposed two unique physics models for teleportation that are based on the manipulation of either the general relativistic space-time metric or the space-time vacuum electromagnetic zero-point fluctuations. So, so when they're talking to us about a space vacuum, guys, here's what we we're talking about. Space-time vacuum. What does that mean? Zero-point fluctuation. That means the zero-point field. Okay. So out in, in space... Is, is just zero point, like this pure energy. It's not nothing, okay? So naturally occurring anomalous teleportation phenomena that were previously studied by the United States and foreign governments were also documented in the study and are reviewed in the report. The author proposes an additional model for teleportation that is based on a combination of the experimental results from the previous government studies and advanced physics concepts. Numerous recommendations outlining proposals for further theoretical and experimental studies are given in the report. The report also includes an extensive teleportation bibliography. <sighs> Mind blown. So I'm glad I was able to kind of recapture this, get this far into the thread, right? I'm feeling less rushed today. It's not Christmas, right? It's not holiday with everyone running around, freezing cold, everything's nuts. No, it's, it's my day off. So I'm able to relax a little. And, uh, Look at some of this information with you all. Incredible stuff. Uh, oh, and how many pages, guys? Of course, 88. A88, right? What do we need to go through time? We need 88 miles an hour. Are these coincidences? You know what I mean? Are these coincidences? 
Can we call this guy and ask him if it's legit? Hmm, who knows? Anyway. <laughs> of course, keep in mind uh, the fact that the government formulated or supplied the drawing specification or other data does not license the holder or any other person or corporation to convey any of this uh, or, or sell that may relate to them. Interesting. Well, hopefully I'm not going to get flagged for like putting this in there. I don't think so. I think it should be fine. But we've got the 88 pages. <laughs> of course, <laughs> for teleportation, we've got to have 88 pages, right? Anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's we're going to take a look at the table of contents. Uh, I'll include the the link to this in the in the notes down there. Um, but here we go. We have the definition of teleportation, engineering it, wormhole formalism, exotic manager, matter energy requirements, engineering the vacuum, the polarizable vacuum representation of general relativity. Conclusion recommendations, teleportation, quantum teleportation. So there are a few different types of teleportation, it seems. Extra space, space dimensions and parallel universes and spaces. Man, it's all here. Whew. Few words about negative energy. <laughs> wow, guys, we might just have to keep looking through this. Lists of figures. Diagram of simultaneous view of two remote compact regions, omega and omega squared, used to create a, the wormhole throat. Was it epsilon omega or something? Where time is suppressed in this representation. So trip out on this, guys. What if we are all right? We we know of the toroidal field representation of where we live. Like then we have the flat Earth plane, right? Like, just humor me for a minute. We have that. That's uh, Vesca Pisces, right? Okay. Anyway, wormhole throat, Absalon Omega. I think that's Absalon. I don't know. You know, don't quote me. But where time is suppressed in this representation. <laughs> what if the plane that we're on, guys, is the time suppressed region, right? And there's a reason why these old ancient whatever structures are existing um they're existing because they exist in real time okay but we are here in a time suppressed region and you know it's interesting that when you look at scripture you, you hear of god talking about being the alpha and the omega i know this is not an alpha but what if it's just a mis misrepresentation and what if it's also being encoded in our scripture, what this place really is, right? And, you know, what better way to experience things than outside of time where nothing can be damaged, nobody can be hurt. Uh, you know, other people would beg to differ, but like no one can be offended or really had anything done wrongly to them um, because we're just in like some weird Twilight Zone dimension, I guess, or like lost, uh, lost century, or you know something like that. The the the, the theories and, and premise abound, you know, in fiction for this. So anyway, I mean, move, moving on. Um, Ka Casimir effect cavity waveguide. So I mean, this gets deep, guys. This gets super deep, and, and we're gonna take a look. Wow, we'll peek into it. Okay, and then we've got, of course, all of the abbreviations. They, they got to make it so much harder to read, right? Okay. So I, as you see here, they are telling you about zero-point energy. They're telling you about zero-point fluctuations. They're telling you about psychokinesis. Just by writing this paper. I mean, look at this. You want to know what's going on in Vegas, guys? Come on. Warp drive metrics, guys. They're, they're doing some crazy stuff under there. Kind of makes you wonder what the Vegas Strip is. And maybe all of that energy that's being harvested through all that gambling and all that activity and all that vice and sin, and whatever else, maybe it is a part of the energy, the uh, exotic energy that's needed to, to fulfill these things. Just a thought. So... 
preface, teleportation physics study divided into four phases. Phase one, review and documentation. Okay, phase two, develop the textbook description for teleportation. So, wow, phase three, teleportation phenomena occurring naturally or under laboratory conditions that can be assembled into a model describing technician. I'm curious about this occurring naturally teleportation phenomena right there. What is that about? That's what I'm curious about. Let's see if we can't find, look into that. And, and again, I'll leave this, leave this here. Here we go. Introduction. Now, the concept of teleportation was originally developed for, during the golden age of 20th century science fiction literature by writers in name of a form of instantaneous disembodied transportation technology to support the blood, the plots of their stories. That's what they say. That's what they're telling you. Uh, you know, this is all about like, listen, they just needed it to tell a story. They just needed it to tell a story. <laughs> I, I is that hey that listen that's a possibility also right it's a possibility also. So, <laughs> so we have it. Where does it start out right? 1960, 1958, The Fly. I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Fly with uh, uh what's his name there. Ah. You know, anyway, the fly, the fly to freaky stuff. So I think that stuff was put out to make people feel so terrified of the possibilities that the, of things that could go wrong, right? People molding with bugs. You know what I mean? Um, of course, it's also in the twilight zone and the outer limits. So they've been throwing this in our faces. Now, is it as an effort to get us to disbelieve, right? To say, nah, that couldn't be. That couldn't possibly be. It's fiction, right? Just like everything else they do to us. So, and it goes on and on. And, and you know, later on, Gene Roddenberry, you know, Star Trek, the transporter device, etc. But one thing that we, we see, we do see is in Star Trek, you don't see anybody ever being merged with each other, right? So maybe they're giving us a piece of the truth. Maybe this uh, transporter device exists. Um, and furthermore, maybe upon death, we in engage with that transporter device and go elsewhere. Who knows? So anyway, um, that's the concept, right? Star Trek, it's embedded in that. Definitions of teleportation. Okay. Teleportations. Uh, so we have different. Sci-fi, disembodied transport of persons or inanimate objects across space by advanced technological means. Call this SF teleportation, which will not be considered further in this study. <laughs> okay, but however, psychic, the conveyance of persons or inanimate objects by psychic means. We will call this P teleportation. So, so basically, all right, they're telling you that disembodied transport isn't a thing. Like taking you apart and sending you elsewhere is not how it works. Um, but apparently there seems to be P teleportation, which is psychic. Teleportation, engineering the vacuum or space-time metrics, the conveyance of persons or inanimate objects across space by altering the properties of the space-time vacuum or by alterating, altering the space-time geometry. The fractal essence by digging into that that geometry, that sacred geometry. So shape power again, guys. Call this VM teleportation. Why do they call it VM? Oh, vacuum manipulation. Okay. Quantum entanglement, the disembodied transport of the quantum state of a system and its correlations across space to another system, where system refers to any single or collective particles of matter or energy, such as baryons, protons, neutrons, etc., leptons. Electrons, etc., photons, atoms, ions, etc. We call this Q teleportation, quantum teleportation. Okay. Exotic teleportation, the conveyance of persons or inanimate objects by transport through extra space dimensions or parallel universes. We call this E teleportation. Wow. Through extra space dimensions. We will examine each of these in detail in the following chapters. I guess I didn't know what I was getting into finding this. This is incredible. And, you know, if anybody's out there and, and can do this math, 
uh, please, you know, feel free and verify. Uh, but you know, it's it's coming straight from the source here. It's coming straight from the source. It's coming straight from the teleportation physics study, in the U.S. Air Force Research Lab. Psychokinesis teleportation studied. See, this has been studied all around the world. Chinese experiments reported using gifted children and young adults who possess uh, PK ability to cause the teleportation of various test specimens. So when we talk about how powerful we really are, this is just an idea, guys. Wow. In all the experimental cases that were reported, the test specimens that were teleported were completely unaltered or unchanged from their initial state. Even the insects were unaffected by being teleported. <laughs> so they're telling you, listen, the fly, the movie, the fly, that's not how it works. Experiments were well controlled, scientifically recorded, and experimental results were always repeatable. Chinese peppers, Chinese papers, sorry. I don't know about Chinese peppers. But anyway, so man, incredible, incredible stuff. Let's go back to teleportation physics study. So it's a possibility. It's so much a possibility that the U.S. Air Force, uh, USSR, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, they're all digging into this heavily, right? What do I think is happening here when we talk about sending people to Mars, right? Um, I, I think really do, guys. I, I think that we're talking about through these means. I don't think we're going to send a rocket up. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that we can I don't think that we can exist outside of the vibration of our own space time. Maybe we can exist in a parallel similarly vibrating space time, but in an absolute vacuum where there's nothing, no energy, nothing, I think we would have to have the equivalent of like a, a space station thing, like you know, like deep space nine uh to take us from point A to point B. Like it would have to be like an arc or like a like like the where do we have it like that like the the citadel you know interesting interesting stuff yeah my mind's a little blown right now so <clears throat> anyway wormhole thin shell formalism so and it just goes on guys it goes on to explain how these work what the the wormhole junction is which is i, I want to say it's epsilon omega let's take a look Let's see what Absalom is. Maybe I spelled it wrong. I don't know. Anyway, just bear with me, guys. Is that the right shape? I don't think I spelled it right, guys. Is it Greek? Who knows? Anyway, I'm getting way off here. We should just jump back into looking at the, the studies here. No, E is epsilon. So, so what is... Let's look at this alphabet. I'm just curious, guys. I want to know what that, that, uh, that one is that we're seeing here. It's like a backwards six. What is the backward six? It's not delta. Hmm. Rho, phi. I don't see it, so it has to be something different. No. I think the closest thing we have to it is delta. Which is interesting in itself, right? Is it delta? Ah, uh, I think it. I think it is delta omega. Interesting. So, anyway, moving on. I know it's getting a little dragged out. Thank you guys for their patience and and coming with me here. And. Um, Diagram of a simultaneous view of two remote compact regions. Use space to create the wormhole where time is suppressed in this representation. Interesting. 
same diagram as in figure one, except viewed by an observer sitting in region one who looks through the wormhole throat and sees remote region two. So if you're sitting here, you could look through. So is this what we have calling remote viewing? Are they inferring that the power of the mind is such that it's a legitimate viewing of an alternative space? Now, what, what that makes me wonder is when they do this remote viewing, guys, are are they seeing a possibility? Or are they seeing it as it's happening in the same wavelength and the same vibration space that they're in but see it's showing me omega squared not omega to the one power so it's got to be different right mind-blowing stuff the resulting space-time is everywhere riemann flat except at the throat oh it is delta it is a delta function interesting Wow. See, that's kind of mind blowing to me, guys. And I don't know if um, if any of you out there have delved into uh, any of the tetrahydrocannabinols, right? The deltas. Um, these things seem to be able to key and, and this can be psychedelics in general, really, guys, um, seem to be able to key us into a uh, a different omega than we're sitting in. Right. I mean, you imbibe or ingest or inhale or, or what have you. And uh, and you are suddenly able to view within a little bit clearer. Um, but I, I don't think it takes away from the fact that when we view within, we may very well be viewing for all, for, you know, sake of argument, like another place. <laughs> you know, when we look within, we may be looking into a completely different dimension than we understand. But anyway, that's that's going way off. But let's move on. All right. So the, a lot of this stuff is going to be really dry, really boring. But a thin shell of localized matter energy, or rather the two-dimensional space-like hypersurface of delta omega, pros, pr possessing the two principal radii of the curvature P1 and P2. So, so is this suggesting maybe we were just riding on this thin shell of mass energy, right? And we're like here. So, so maybe like the, the general idea that we're talking about space time is, is, is generally okay. Um, but there are other hypersurfaces in, in the hyperverse. <laughs> so, um, interesting and this all jumps through some hoops, giving the final result here. These are the Einstein equations. Imply that for delta omega convex, we're dealing with negative surface energy density and negative surface, surface tensions. The result is the fact that the primary matter requirement for traversable wormholes So through rel general relativity, they're also demonstrating that this is possible. It is is I guess uh, <laughs> is I guess the idea. Now the reader should not be alarmed at this result. Okay, negative energies and negative stress tensions are acceptable result both mathematically and physically. So so you know they're they're telling you that yes, of course integers are okay. You can go negative, right? Um, if we have a positive reality, you can have a negative reality, right? Um, and I think we all know this. I think we we see this in our daily decisions. We have the opportunity to create a positive or a negative reality, right? A high vibe or a low vibe. Good, bad, up, down, light, black, right? So that doesn't make white any less because it has no black in it. And that doesn't make black any less because it has no white in it, right? They're just different, but they both exist. So anyway, that's that. Uh, and man, this is extensive. Exotic energy, matter energy requirements. Um, we have to estimate the amounts of the amount of negative mass energy needed. Negative mass energy. What is that? I'm curious, guys, and I hope you are too. I think that's what this world is all about: is this curiosity and this 
kind of wondering what's going on here. And uh, negative mass, exotic matter. And it's, of course, in theoretical <laughs> physics, right? Let's take a look. Let's just take a look at what negative mass is. And remember, we, we started this thread on mass effect, right? That could exactly be what teleportation is. So there may very well be something incredibly valid about this entire thought. Okay. No, I, they always like to interrupt me. And I'm not going to donate to that. If I'll donate, I'll donate my, my, my thoughts on a, a specific item. But anyway, theoretical physics... So it, it would be the, so this is dark matter. Negative mass is dark matter. Negative mass is the vacuum. It is, you know, negative mass. Speculative. Okay. So, so we have all of this, right? The Casimir effect is a physical force acting. So, so it, that's like in the quantum field, you have um, quantum tunneling it is, as I guess one way you can look at that. Um, where you're able to travel through something, right? And come out on the other side without actually going through it. You just kind of quantumly circumvent it. It's interesting. Um, artificial wormhole. So now we see what, what that is and, and what it is said. In, in relativity, um, it, it's essentially like denied, like it's not a real thing. Dark fluid. So they're, they're just jumping through all the hoops, guys, to deny that the ether exists is what I'm seeing. And, and I'm sure a lot of you see that also. So let's jump back into the, the heavy reading, shall we? Engineering the vacuum. So anyway, I'm just uh, hopefully I demonstrated that the negative mass is a real thing. Okay. They say it's theoretical. It's dark matter. It's that taboo that we hear so much about. Dark matter. Opposite sign of normal matter. Right? So the reason that it's theoretical, guys, is because they have not, there's no way to quantify it to, to you in, in a brass tack scientific approach. Okay? It, it, there's just no way for them to do that. So uh, so what do they do? They create a branch of physics that is theoretical because it exists in the ether or in the mind or the one all, right? So, so you know, everybody's going to see this a little differently, but that's just how I see it. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> I think what they're doing with CERN is some of this engineering the space-time vacuum. That would satisfy engineering vacuum teleportation. So by actually manipulating the ether, it could create a tunnel to anywhere, whatever they wanted to be on a vib vibratory, you know, sympathetic resonance with. So interesting stuff, right? Now what's, what's interesting to me though, uh, is so we have exotic matter, matter energy requirements. Seems to me that when you look out into the universe and you see 80% of out there that we see on our telescopes is dark and is dark and, and still has mass. They recognize that it still has mass, right? Because of the way the universe behaves, right? Um, and, and this is on common mainstream astrophysics, right? That they have extended to us and told us, yes. <clears throat> that dark fluid, that dark energy out there has mass. Okay. Now, if that's the case, <clears throat> what powers the stars? We're told nuclear fission, fusion, whatever, right? Now, if all of that dark mass out there is potential energy, is exotic matter energy, could it not be what's powering what we see as these luminaries, right? These luminaries. I think that's a huge possibility, but more on that another time. I'm getting like way off and, you know, I don't care. This is a good time for me. So uh, hopefully many of you are having uh, as interesting of a time looking into this. And and we'll start looking into some of this stuff yourselves and and see just how incredible 
just the idea of all of our existence can our contributions to the collective how how it's just amazing all this stuff is um when there's so much going on behind it I mean, there's so much going on behind our physical positive mass world but there's like all this that we don't know about this negative mass world that is like 80 percent of everything so it's it's crazy it's just mind-blowing some of this stuff and uh yeah, so I really hope that you're able to dig into some of this and and really kind of grasp some of it. It's super abstract. A lot of it is super abstract when you're talking about theory, right? But it's it's laid out here in as plain of language as is possible. Photons can change into a variety of short-lived or virtual particles as they fly through the vacuum. Wow. That's interesting itself. Virtual electrons and virtual protons. So are we are we diving into this quantum field with this metaverse thing? Right? I, I mean, it's clear there's an underlying structure that, that makes everything possible, including our own computations and our own quantum delving, right? So... <clears throat> Zero point energy, and they go on to to explain the dynamics between zero point fluid, zero point energy, etc. It, it goes on. Uh, they they supposedly have proved that the suppression of light scattering by virtual particle pairs in the vacuum causes an increase in the speed of light. So so the vacuum itself is slowing light down. How could a vacuum do that? It's not a vacuum. It's dark energy. Okay. Anyway. And this is some of that Casimir effect or that quantum tunneling. Um, so the space between is full of virtual or possible photons and electrons. And, and so, so they're basically saying that even though we can't actually see the particle travel through, a representation or a shadow particle of itself actually does the traveling. And then on the other side, the positive particle reemerges. So I'll let that sink in there for a second. So, you know, and, and I don't want anyone to, to come under the misconception that I'm like some kind of crazy mathematician. I understand a lot of the basics of what's being said here, um, but I'm not a mathematician. So please, if you have the capability, feel free and verify some of these equations for us. That would be great. Uh, and just like everything in this world, everything that we that we receive when we're not the expert is a story, right? So this is just a story I'm reading. All right. That's why I'm able to not take it very personally, to kind of go with it, to be okay with whatever the end results are going to be. Um, you know, we're trained so young to not be okay with the result that doesn't sit in line with what we're taught. And I don't know about you guys, but none of this stuff... <laughs> None of this stuff sits in line with anything that's taught in the mainstream. And, and maybe it's different in Ivy League school. Maybe it's different when you're groomed from a very young age to be a successful, um, entrepreneurial, intelligent person. But let's just face it, the vast majority of us are not conditioned for that. So the fact that I can even kind of understand what's going on here, I find amazing and beautiful. So hopefully you all can see that also. incredible and it goes on for another 60 pages so technical notes i mean it's got all the surveys in here polarizable vacuum representation of general relativity so they've got all of these different ways of looking at general relativity which really just tear it to shreds <laughs> but you know they've got to work within the framework that they've been given they're they're trying to have a successful and profitable and you know whatever life so they've got to fall into the category that's already built and slowly start to build outside of it slowly start to to expand it to the point where it breaks and then suddenly everything out here is valid to be looked at right so that's i think that's what we're seeing happening in the world today guys we're seeing things bubble to the surface 
or seeing ideas, concepts, hopes, dreams, etc., bubble to the surface. And and what's unfortunate for the people that aren't going with the flow and and you know increasing their vibration and bettering themselves and and living positive, productive lives, they're settling down to the bottom of that blackness and, and they're getting like caught in the despair, you know, and and they're getting they're getting cooked out of this. <laughs> okay. In, a, in an alchemical way of putting it across, right? Those people that you see sinking ever faster, they're, they're falling to the bottom of the solution, right? And where you sit in that solution of alchemy of the soul depends on your vibration, depends on where you are, it depends on how open your mind is, how ready you are to be upset, deal with it, get over it, et cetera. So. So it's a, a lot of interesting concepts here. I'm super glad that I came across this. I will include this in the notes for everybody. If you want to take a look, it's a lot to digest. Um, I'm going to have to probably sit for a couple of days and, and read through this just to get a better idea. But basically what I'm seeing here is there's some validity. There's some validity to this. There's some validity to this concept. I don't know if it has to do with the cathedrals or not, but the concept itself is pretty solid, right? Maybe let's take a look at this YouTube video on mass relays real quick. Hopefully it won't flag me for copyright. Oh, no, it's not even going to let me play it. That's fine. Oh, well. Okay. So, so that's the idea, right? I do think that we live in a giant machine. What that machine is doing, it, it's definitely allowing us the opportunity to experience what we're experiencing, to have the capacity to look at some of this stuff and understand it just screams ether to me, you know, because I haven't done enough studying. And this is, you can take this for what you want, people. I haven't done enough collegiate level studying on quantum physics to validate why I'm able to understand it why it makes sense to me why it makes sense to me doesn't make sense so that tells me that there is another dimension another aspect that we have access to it's not just what we have consumed and put in here we are able to access concepts and ideas from outside of our collecting of of knowledge throughout this life and, and i think it's an amazing beautiful thing and I think it's tied directly, directly to what could be called mass effect or what could be called teleportation or psychokinesis, right? So, and, you know, one of the thoughts someone has says, do you think that the Large Hadron Collider could be such a contraption they're trying to create? I think this is exactly what they're doing with these devices, guys. They know, they know what they're doing. To put something out as a as a full fledged fiction with so much background that it makes perfect sense, and then you line it up with papers that are written by like you know the those who hold ranks in this knowledge. Like, come on, it, it's at a certain point, it goes beyond fiction, becomes possibility. I you know I hope that that all of you out there are opening to possibilities, and odds are if you've made it this far in this video you are a possibilian. So, so it just makes me wonder, all right, Stargate, how would that work within this framework? Would it be gravitationally squeezed vacuum energy? Would it be, you know, this Casimir effect? Would it be negative quantum vacuum energy on a reflective surface? Wow, it's crazy, right? Look at all these different ideas on how to generate negative energy in the lab that can be extracted optically squeezed laser light guess what you'd be producing in the lhc guys you can produce optically squeezed laser light <whistles> right <laughs> you can you can uh that casimir effect or that quantum tunneling i think that's a big one guys something we need to pay a little bit more attention to it's happening all around us incredible squeezed quantum Mm -hmm. so they're talking about making black holes they're talking about gravitational squeezing 
I, I mean, it's it's really incredible. Absolutely incredible. Theoretical programs. Let's look at those recommendations. The, these are recommendations for theoretical programs. A one to two year study of $80,000 should be initiated, which means it probably already was uh, initiated in order to define and model negative energy density source in the Ooh, one or two years. So I'm going to throw $80,000 at these studies. Defining characteristics of negative energy. And, and I'm going to look here in a second and find out when this was written. It was quite some time ago. So, Okay, 2003. So think about that, guys. It's 20 years ago they're telling us, listen, we got this. Uh, now we just need to figure out exactly how to cultivate and, and, and grow that negative energy or that dark matter thing. So interesting, dude. Quantum teleportation device. UV pulse goes in, is scanned. Yeah, so quantum teleportation, what they're calling it, this here is um, quantum tunneling. Okay. So incredible stuff. Incredible. There's so much going on around us that we have no idea about, like how just how our computers work, how everything else works. It all boils down to these concepts. And, you know, it seems like we're just kept ignorant on the abilities of this technology. So that we stay in our lane, so that we're happy with just looking at Instagram or like watching a video or whatever, when really within each of these devices is the capacity to do all of these crazy sci-fi things. But, you know, we don't care as long as we can look at cat videos, right? As long as we can, <laughs> as long as we can uh, do this, that, and the other, as long as I can order shit from Amazon, I'm good. So... So, uh, you know, hopefully this kind of outline shows some some folks that these things exist. These are legitimate things. These are things that have been being developed for such a long time that we, we've we got to start looking at our past differently. Our past led us to the point we are today, whether it's ancient aliens or ancient astrophysicists from beyond the quantum realm, who cares? <laughs> the bottom line is we have, as a human collective, been able to process this information and achieve a certain level based on what we've been handed. And, and that's beautiful. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. So, I mean, these studies have been going on for, for probably 40, 50, 60 years, guys. Um, biological quantum teleportation, 2002. Okay. There's several obstacles to teleporting large, complicated objects, especially biological entities. Decoherence is the primary obstacle. That is because the observable quantum effects in biological matter is thought to be strongly suppressed due to the macroscopic nature of most biological entities and the fact that such systems live at or near room temperature. And there's always contact between biological entities and the environment or the source of decoherence. These co um, conditions result in a very fast collapse of the pertinent quantum wave functions to one of the allowed classical states of the biological entity so like it, it in in traveling through this quantum state you, you freeze and it kills you essentially right um because you're you're going into a place of no like you're leaving this biosphere it is what it is and <clears throat> so so what does that mean like with with quantum or, or with teleportation, like we're talking about when we're talking about mass effect, right? If all of these things existed within this biosphere, there should be no reason why they couldn't transport people from one cathedral to another. There's there's really no reason that it shouldn't if they had the underlying information that we seem to have nowadays since at least 2002. So... Yeah, I know this one got crazy deep and, and weird and like also interesting at the same time. Um, I hope that, you know, you leave some comments and uh, if you have any insight as to where more information like this might be available, please let me know. 
Um, again, I will include this link uh, to this page in, in the notes. That way you all can get to it, okay? So uh, yeah, so that's the thought. We're gonna leave it at that. It's a lot, a lot to deal with. Keep in mind that all of our computation is quantum at, at this point. All of our information transfer, for the most part, at least has one one area where it goes quantum. And is sent data being sent in packets is, is a common thing nowadays with the digital world. Digital is quantum. We are diving into another dimension without even realizing it. So something just to, to keep in mind there. Um, and uh, so Broad Spectrum Quantum Computing Technology Development Program, DARPA, the good old boys at DARPA, DARPA down there, um, and the U.S. Army Research Office are funding this stuff. And that was back in 1999. They funded 19 million. Of course, 19 million because the Illuminati is involved, right? But keep in mind, guys, this, this experience that we're having here, this thing is a program. It's designed for a purpose. The purpose is you better yourself. You help others while you're doing it. You move onward and upward. That's my personal idea and, and concept of what this is all going on. Um, because somewhere in there behind the scenes lies an entity that encompasses all of this knowledge. Call it God, call it whatever you want. Call it the one, the all. Uh, call it all of us. Call it what you want. Names are subjective on experience. So quantum cryptography, right? We see this stuff happening. This is what's happening in our daily world right now. So anyway, decoherence is the primary reason we don't, do not routinely see any quantum effects in our everyday world. It imposes a fundamental limit on quantum entanglement and teleportation via the ina interaction between en enabled and teleported quantum systems and their local environment. So, so again, I, I think that if we're working within the same biosphere, um, or even an opposite dimension that is similar or the same, we might be able to be doing some moving between point A and point B that way. Um, pure quantum states. In order to enable and teleport quantum particles and bulk objects, they must both be prepared in a pure quantum state. And pure quantum states are very fragile to decoherence. A technical challenge for the entanglement teleportation physics is whether the requirement for quantum states can be relaxed and how much decoherence will play in a role of the situation. So they're, 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 they're looking into this stuff, guys. They're looking into this stuff. Biological quantum teleportation. The Mavromatos et al. 2002 theoretical model for biological entanglement and teleportation is a remarkable concept that could result in the development of a workable physics study theory of consciousness. So you want to know... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> You want to know why everything is all about consciousness right now? Why the big push for understanding, developing your consciousness, etc.? We are on the cusp of quantum involvement here, right? Our data is already engaged in it, but us as 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 a consciousness, <clears throat> we're being prepared to engage with this. Um, what that is in a religious fervor, I, you know, who cares? But, uh we're being prepared for this. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of people look at the metaverse, they're like, that's evil. They want to trap you in a computer. Um, where really, when you're looking at, at quantum teleportation and you're, and you're feeling like maybe you need a way out of this thing that we're in, right? They're going to give a valid solution to people in this metaverse um, quantum state reprogramming of yourself is that you know you download your mind your consciousness put it into a quantum state and then guess what suddenly you can go uh outside of the biosphere i think that's what the goal is whether it's good or bad or indifferent you know who knows we'll see but i think that's the idea guys i think that's what we're we're on to and uh i think there's some really incredible stuff in this video and i hope you all stuck through and I, I hope that you go and take a look at, at some of these breakthroughs, new entanglement teleportation breakthroughs. The most exciting developments in quantum teleportation physics include the teleportation of a laser beam with an embedded radio signal. So they're telling us now they can send information faster than light. This is what we've been waiting for in sci-fi world, <laughs> right? And if they're able to do that, are they also able to receive from other quantum realms and states?
And is that what has been happening all along, all the way back to John D and his black scrying mirror? Was it a quantum entangled device allowing information to come from a different quantum level or dimension? So hopefully I didn't lose everybody on this crazy rant. This went a lot further than I had anticipated here. But, um, you know, again, go take a look at some of these threads. And and I'm not behind, like, 100% behind the threads in an effort to, like, get you to go to certain websites. What it is, is is an effort to help you to think outside of it, think outside of the thread and outside of the box, right? A lot of these threads have some very interesting information that if you don't dig into any further like this, you're not really going to understand why this is such a valid concept. And usually you got to get down to the point where you're looking at people's responses, right? So incredible stuff, incredible stuff. Um, a lot of this stuff maybe isn't theories and keep in mind, like 20 years ago, we had the, our Stargate series, like what, 30 years ago, that would have been right about the time they were still working on this stuff before it came public. So is there a possibility that these are reveals? In these movies? I think so. I think so. Oh, check this out. If you're if you're itching for <laughs> now, it does this does this actually work this way as is stated in this book? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who knows, right? We don't know, but it's a physicist who wrote it. I, I, I wonder. Translocational abilities. <laughs> this book was filled with images of dolphins and hippie shit. You won't learn to teleport here. <laughs> Close your eyes and imagine you're elsewhere. <laughs> I love it. So on that front, we've got that. We've got that sort of teleportation going right? Um, I, I think that we're being shown things that we haven't quite got a grasp on what they really are yet. But it's fine. It's all in good fun. We're here to experience um, and, you know, engage and, and have as best of a time as we can and be the best that we can. So super string theory in the 1990s, Something interesting when you start Netflix up, what do you see? You see the strings, boom, boom, right? So, so if we are existing in just one string, there are many, many, many more strings out there. So I got to go ahead and, and pull away from this. Uh, this is so interesting to me. Teleportation concept. Time does not exist as a zero space. Vacuum hole teleportation. Virtual holes or zero space and space time must exist at every point in the universe. So it goes on. I mean, it gets even weirder, even crazier. Um, you could send an object supposedly outside of the universe by creating a closed surface uh, or a whole sphere, which consists of vacuum holes around the object. Um, what would that whole sphere look like? A closed surface. I have an idea. I'm not going to say it, but you know, you can imagine those spherical things that are microscopic that we've been getting to look at. Really makes me wonder what they're doing with this nanoparticles um, tech stuff. Are are we really peopling the universe to a, an even more massive extent by by creating all of these this metaverse, this nano world? Like, what's really going on? There's so much more going on that we just don't know about. And it's so incredible and so interesting. Um, and once you decide to to think outside of like the fear box, right? Here we go into PK phenomena. I'll probably lose a bunch of people when I start digging into paranormal parapsychology uh, phenomena. But I personally, I'm a firm believer that possibilities are bound and endless. So uh, anyway. Well, much love to everybody out there. Um, thank you so much for hopping on with me on this beautiful, absolutely freezing cold day. Um, I was looking at some interesting stuff on 
Instagram, you know, surfing through the junk and everything. And there's this idea that the reason that, that the weather has been manipulated and it has gotten so cold is because there's an underground battle happening with aliens and entities and things like that. And <laughs> maybe, right. It makes just about as much sense as everything else out there. Uh, I'm doing the best I can to try and enjoy this clown world, be the best, you know, parent and person that I can be. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope and I pray and I extend my, my gratitude to you all for tuning in. And, uh, you know, Again, I hope and pray that you find your way or are finding your way um, or that at a minimum, even if you're not quite found your way, you're able to help somebody else take that step that you maybe have just taken. Yeah, that's an important thing to do. And uh, but yeah, I just want to extend my love to everybody out there. Much love to you all. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you were able to find something of value uh, in this video. I I'm sure it's a little long. Who knows how long it is? I didn't even check. But there, there's some incredible, incredible stuff in here. And I will put those links for you all in the descriptor. And uh, again, you know, dive into some threads, open your mind, expand your thought. When you see somebody saying something a certain way, look for the opposite argument. Heck, look for a third argument that doesn't even exist yet and explore that. You know, um, we have this capability to think and to interpret and to absorb and to do all these really amazing things when you consider by rights, maybe we don't have to have anything. Maybe, you know, if we were really going to be slave robots, why would we even have the ability to think, right? If that's all we were, why would we have the ability to ponder, to process, to, to pray, to open ourselves, to close ourselves off? Why would we have these abilities if we were just slaves? You know what I mean? So hopefully you don't get caught in the the woe is me matrix slave mentality. Um, it's definitely a place many of us get stuck in for periods of time. And uh, so hopefully you're able to find this, this video and understand that possibilities abound. And if you're ever in doubt about the possibilities that are around you, go look at Google patents, man. Think of something that's outlandish that you don't ever think could be invented and look it up. Bet you find it. And think, you, think about an argument that you might have or a, a difference of opinion and look up the opposite to that. You're going to find it. Why? Because asking, you shall find. That's how this world works. And um, so keep asking is, is all I'm saying, everybody. Much love to everybody. Godspeed. God bless. Um, be one. Be all. Be merry. Happy New Year. Uh, all that good stuff. Much love, everybody. Bye.